We record. Oh, we are recording. Another little Transformers After Dark. Should we do that? I gotta make Caleb a martini. Maybe I'll skimper on down here and get some fucking on. Right, everybody. Happy Valentine's Day. Suck, suck that dick. Look at that pussy. Oh yeah, you know what you wanna do. What you wanna do is get down to the bare nakedness and get some loving on. You know, maybe you. Oh, this. Maybe you just wanna do some like, like a little kissing. There's nothing wrong with a nice kiss. We don't have to go leaping straight for the vagina, do we, boys? Ladies, come on. Maybe just a little romantic kiss, and we don't have to fuck just because it's Valentine's Day, just because Hallmark says we have to. <gasps> Autobot is up because I'm dark. A-P-D-C-A-D. Happy Valentine's Day. Love and kisses are in the air. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Autopod Decepticast, your weekly podcast delivering a minute-by-minute breakdown of the 1986 Transformers movie. This is episode 48, covering the 4701 to 48-minute mark. It is Valentine's week, ladies and gentlemen. So Happy if Valentine's! <laughs> if you're keeping up with the show, you're no doubt preparing for that special day this week when you express your love through the act of consumerism. Will it be a, <laughs> political? <laughs> will it be a card? Will it be chocolates? Perhaps you're one of those deep types who express yourself through works and not gifts, so you <laughs> settle for a homemade card or homemade chocolates. I like the idea of of, of someone sharing the gift of the Autopod Decepticast. To do <laughs> Force them to listen. Yeah. If you loved me, you'd listen and make an iTunes review. Yes. <laughs> Either way, if you're like me and you plan nothing, get your shit together. <laughs> this is uh, your final warning. It's all love here at the APDC. I'm your host, Aaron, and with me are the bow and arrow to my chubby little Cupid. <laughs> I'm Ryan. Which one am I? I guess. What do you I want to be? be the arrow because it looks like a dick. I'll be the bow. Yeah. This is Caleb. I'm back. He didn't uh, die. I did not die. Back am, and better than ever. I you am, sound great. I'm feeling a lot better. I was very sick. Yeah, it sounded terrible. For quite terrible. some time. You fell asleep while recording. I uh, did. I uh, <laughs> I choked my... I coughed into oblivion. I'm uh, glad to be back. What are your New York group plans for this Valentine's Day or anything? I good? have bought something special for my special someone. I think I will write a very nice handwritten note, mm-hmm. put it in the gift. I hope it's our promo cards. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I, I don't have anything really funny to say particularly. Um, do you want to tell us what it is? Well, uh, she's not going to listen to this. Yeah, no. I, got her a nice, I got her a nice bracelet. Oh, my yeah, uh, I got her. Uh, I got it on a. I got a good deal on a bracelet. <laughs> <laughs> I know a guy. Well, don't say a good deal. <laughs> say you paid full price. Well, it's pre- it's pre- it, it's actually it's pretty nutty how much these people mark this stuff up. All right, cause yeah. my, so my aunt, my aunt buys a lot of jewelry in Dallas. She her her jewel one of her jewelry stores is going out of business. That she deals Why are you with. smiling? Uh, because <laughs> Caleb's rich ass aunt. Because well, it's like one of her jewelry stores is going out oh, of business. Oh, I see. You know, but she's anyway, falling she on said, hard times. She said, "Hey, so they're slashing prices," <laughs> and I, I gave her a budget of like I said, I don't really want to spend any more than four hundred dollars, which is a lot. Mm-hmm. But I haven't bought her jewelry in a while, and she's. I, I it just feels like the right time <laughs> to get her something really nice. So. I ended up getting this bracelet, the sterling silver bracelet with quartz on it for like like $200. Mm-hmm. Regular price, $1,200. Whoa. Whoa. Is this jewelry store still falling out of business and I should take advantage it's, of this? It's done, I guess. I don't know. But Man. what the crazy thing is, it's like, okay, that guy was selling that for $1,200 and he's able to mark it down to $200. Well, you really make your money when you're getting blood diamonds. <laughs> Yeah, so it's just it's amazing how much these it just it makes me makes you think like these guys are marking this stuff. It's Ooh, also hilarious yeah. because we've all just agreed that precious stones and gold and silver are worth something when inherently they have absolutely no value. Sure, well it's like on the it's like on Alf's planet like 
Like gold and silver had no value, but on their planet, it was all styrofoam and gravel that was the precious commodity. Is that true? Yes, it is. I don't remember that. We, we talked about it. Did we? I think we I've covered it had in a lot famous of ALF episode. Yeah. <laughs> or in, uh, ALF chat. <laughs> so, anywho, that's what I'm doing. You guys? Uh, Aaron, are you uh, have any plans? I haven't figured it out yet. I think I'd like to try and go up to Herman Wine Country and maybe spend I was hoping it was just there. a guy that you know to get some jewelry. Just going up to Herman <laughs> to get that, that marked down jewelry. <laughs> Mr. Herman. <laughs> right. I haven't figured it out yet, and I need to. Um, I'm going to get her uh, a uh, one of those jeweled butt plugs. Nice. Have you ever seen those? Uh, they, they had one at this jewelry store for three thousand dollars. <laughs> Marked down to it, 300. I, I, three hundred. I'm kidding. I'm not doing that. But like, it is. I didn't realize this was a thing until like a couple months ago. Have you, do you know what I'm talking about? Well, I, I I can imagine a jeweled get, butt plug. I no, guess. It's, does it look like those uh, little like ring? Yes, lollipops? it looks like a ring pop. Okay, except it's a butt plug, and it's like a jewel that like they have them for dog. Well, they don't go in what? the butt for dogs, but it goes around the tail and covers the butthole with a jewel because does it go? That's in, their dogs. That's a different thing. That's but the, all the weird. butt plug doesn't go in their butthole. Wait. Not for so dogs. So is it like people who are ashamed of their dog's butthole? Yeah. Wait a minute. Or I don't want to be friends no, with anybody no, like that. But let, but think about this. That's they're ashamed of their dog's butthole, so they call attention to it by, by having, bedazzling uh, it. By bedazzling it. Yeah. That's <laughs> bullshit. But yeah, the ones that that are for humans, they go in the asshole and they do look like a ring pop. Hmm. Right. So you're not getting that for her. No, I'm not. We're not doing anything. We're, that's okay. I, I'm gonna make her a card, but that's normally why we just do cards. I'm doing something a little extra special. This I think time. I'm gonna make her a card with something, some quote from "Nothing to Lose" on it, because we quote that almost daily nice. to each other. Starring, uh, of course, Martin Lawrence and Tim Robbins. Yes, uh, I love that movie. Fantastic film, indeed. Not bad, Nicholas. Not bad. And I mean, I guess you do our jazz and blast. Oh, okay. So I'll, uh, <laughs> I guess we have to let this slide, or maybe some listeners may choose to not let it slide. Your but, shoes. Uh, you ever heard of Dr. Scholl's? There's a spider on your head. I'm not down with all this jive talk. There's a spider on your head. What does that mean? There's a spider on your motherfucking head, man. Okay. It's been a while since I've seen it, but I do remember I've never seen it. I'm going to just, I could do the whole thing. Uh, uh, by the way, we have a sponsor today. Oh, we do? Yeah, Bro oh. Cells. Oh, break it down. Bro oh, who's Cells. that? Bro Cells is my son's company. Mm, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, he's, he's the president and CEO. Bro Cells, Bro Cells, where we sell good. Well, I'd like to thank Brocells for contributing financially to this episode and making sure that the lights stay on and the hard drive space stays empty. The hot stays hot and the cold stays cold. Yeah, sure, no problem. Brocells, Brocells, where we sell good. Gonna have to load gonna the volume all that. <laughs> um, I does, can't tell because I don't have good. So headphones. we don't know what this company does. Uh, I asked him. He says that they um, human trafficking. That you can bring in things into their store. They'll resell it, or they also make things to sell. Mm, and they also it's a brick and mortar establishment. He's 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 thinking about yeah getting a a, a table. And it, <laughs> is there a website yet? Uh, he it says that there, ha- there he does claim that there is one. I have not. This been all able to seems find real it. shady. Uh, I, I, it sounds legit to me. I mean, the, it's, it's B R O dollar sign E L L dollar sign. Do we, we have you, we have a logo for that, don't we? Aaron, Aaron designed put it up on. We'll the, put it up on the page. Yeah, on the, on the, I, I, I designed. I actually designed a a nice logo, but it got redesigned by yeah. the client, which happens often. Every yeah. time. Yeah. You should show the before and after on that. Uh, the before is not that great either. I spent five minutes on it. He paid me five dollars. I've got hey, yeah. We should frame our first you do <laughs> commission. Have, so he did pay you. He paid me five. He gave you a five dollar roll of dimes. <laughs> nice. You can palm that and use it in a fight. He's got a whole group of kids at school that like work for him. They've got different positions. I don't know what they do, but he's. I think he might be thing. a pimp. <laughs> That'd be cool. <laughs> I don't know if it would. Speaking I, of Valentine's and speaking of pimping, everybody, I guess. <laughs> Master of segues, Aaron. <laughs> Speaking of showing the love, um, and on a consistent basis, we have a uh, shout out. Uh, Who could from, it be? From, <laughs> from our friend De- 85 Bears Rule 76, back nice. on iTunes again. And the headline is uh, Hey Steve. <laughs> and then the body cap, but the body copy, all caps, is Where's my money? Question mark, exclamation, question mark. 
I gotta say I'm stumped on this one, guys. I couldn't figure out where it's from. No, I googled it and nothing came up. Uh, so it's not. It's not. I mean, it, things that came up. Scarface comes up. Uh, the old Family Guy where Stewie beats the hell out of Brian comes up. But nothing is really quite perfect. I can't. I don't better know if off, it's an obscure. Well, there's the two dollars reference on like Better Off Dead, or or is that right? Two dollars. I want my two dollars, but, but I don't he think say, he says, where's, my, where's money? my money. Yeah, I, I was just worried that this might be a real threat. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he has been consistently giving us messages. I'm just waiting for, it, like, the day we get one in the mail that has, like, all the cut-up letters Big on Lebowski? it. Lebowski? Are we going to have to piece this together? It's like a, if we look at all oh. the messages and somehow unscramble it, there's, like, a, a master This message. could be like a Zodiac situation where they, we have to decode it. Oh, man. But now they're all... Well, I guess we have them all via our notes. All right. Screen, do we have screen caps of all those? I, well, I think I've written them down. All oh, right. my gosh. This could be bad. Mm. All right. Well, we've, we've thrown away the pieces of the puzzle. Well, I've grown tired of living anyway, so... <laughs> and my address is on our promotional material. But well, we've, so, we, so far, we've had one... Inter, we've had uh, Robinus uh, Prime acknowledge that he got. That's our first international acknowledgement. Oh, sure. Yeah. Was that... Is it Britain? Yeah, so I maybe I'm hoping that the other ones have made their way to the various locations around the world. I didn't see that. Did he put that on Twitter? Yes. Oh, I missed it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, which reminds me, um, uh, I guess it doesn't remind me. Oh, God. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that was amazing. So, <laughs> so the bears. Uh, we talked about this last episode, uh, whether or not that was a legitimate threat or a movie quote. First of all, what if, what is the if yeah, it's a let, movie quote? What let is us it know. from? And second of all, remember that uh, if you were to open a new iTunes ID, <laughs> we would get we extra, have all this to get all extra, of this on this big page. I like I like I like I like what he's doing. Well, it's like performance art. Last episode recap: Hot Rod poked out the eye of a giant tentacled squid. And picked up Cup's pieces. That brings us to the beginning of this minute. And uh, we open that minute with the closing moments of the previous scene as Hot Rod carries Cup up to the shore of the Quinnison Beach, lays him down it's, gently. It is a beautiful place. Yeah, it's nice. The repair process. It'd be a nice place to invest, like uh, get some beachfront property um, uh, for the energy sea. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, all they play there though is Specter General. <laughs> that sounds perfect. Twenty four seven, and then we move into the next sequence uh, around forty seven oh eight. Uh, the yes. scene changes. Oh. Ultra mm-hmm. Magnus's ship in a great flyover sequence here, rushing towards the atmosphere of Junkie. And that sound at forty seven ten is the Millennium Falcon booster sound. Oh, again. you validated uh, this, mm-hmm. or is it validated, it's, or it's the same sound, and we are still just. It's 100% the same. Okay. It's, it's, it is. Okay. Um, it's throughout the whole thing. Like, it's in the movie all over the place. Now, I had a, I had a question of, like, okay, the planet is not spherical. It's basically a slab of junk, kind of mm-hmm. like that big garbage slick that's in the Pacific Ocean. Mm-hmm. Uh, so technically, and I looked this up by the, um, the International Astron- Astronomical Union, this would not be a planet because their rules are, uh, one, it's in orbit around a star or the sun. Uh, two, has sufficient mass to assume a hydrostatic equilibrium, which means it's round. And three, has cleared the neighborhood around its orbit, which means it's picked up all the like peat debris and stuff in its orbit. So it does not meet probably two of those three criteria, although technically that's only... There's no uh, um, agreed-upon criteria for what a planet, an exoplanet is. This is only for stuff in our solar system. I see. Well, um... This thing, as uh, I'll talk about in the next episode, may be in our solar system. What? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, that's fascinating. Well, you know how I feel about the Junkions. They're your favorite. And they, they can live on whatever they want to live on, man. So this is apparently picking up debris from surrounding areas, I'm It's assuming. true, although, like, to, for example, um, one of the reasons Pluto's not a planet is it doesn't meet the third uh, criterion, which is to clear the neighborhood. Uh, Earth, uh, the debris in Earth's orbit is only, Earth is 1.7 million times the mass of anything else in its orbit. Pluto is only 0.7% the mass of other objects in its orbit. Like, there are, are uh, uh, dwarf planets out there that are bigger than Pluto in the Kuiper Belt. Well, I'm going to guess that the Autobots don't necessarily use the same definition of planet. But, well, it's true, uh, and this is only for stuff on our solar system. I mean, Earth, well, and it's only for stuff that humans That's right. claim. Would be, mm-hmm. well, not to deviate too far, but what about 
Quintesson is that considered a planet? Um, oh, shit. I don't know. It's fairly, it's somewhat spherical. I probably not. It probably doesn't meet the second criteria. Criterion. If is something is man-made, is it a planet? Is Cybertron a planet? Uh, I would say probably. See Cybertron's the can of worms you're opening up here. Um. I would, I think, See what well, I did there? I don't have enough information. It's like those those tests we used to take in Gifted. I don't have enough information to make a judgment on that. Is any of this that we're watching real at all? It is a documentary, and it's told in real time. This whole movie <laughs> is devoid of any kind of scientific fact. Well, we quit. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for listening. This was episode 48 40. <laughs> of the Autopod Decepticast. We are... Signing out. <laughs> Minute 47 broke us. Everything is meaningless, and we should die Gross by our own hands. <laughs> <laughs> One last bite at the apple. <laughs> the scene changes. From inside the ship, we see each Autobot at a station, manning different operations. Bracing uh, for impact. Bracing for impact. Ultra Magnus pushes a lever. He commands everybody to brace for impact. The ship kind of uh, skips and thuds across a, a garbage landscape. And uh, from the window, we see Autobots <laughs> struggling to brace. This shot at 47.22, look at Ultra Magnus' <laughs> mouth. <laughs> He's like screaming. We've got metallic debris smashing into the front of the ship. D- RC, who is, who is holding Daniel, yeah. is thrown from her seat and Which smashes into a console. It's not recommended. Help. Again, yes, did we learn nothing from the crash test dummies? Uh, so I mean, We did learn there was this kid who got into an accident and couldn't come to school. Uh, Daniel should have died right then. Yes. Uh, you could argue that as a robot, perhaps she was holding him rigidly in a way that Daniel maybe should have, would have died. Braced her like a roller coaster, perhaps. Daniel but... should have died right after he left the the fishing pond. <laughs> <laughs> the fishing yeah. pond. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's why again? Why don't any of them have seatbelts? Like, yeah. why is not is nobody secure? I will at have to all? say these Autobot shuttles. They they don't have very good weapons on them, but they can sure crash really well. They do, that does seem to be the late motif of all shuttles, like the one that holding the Autobots and Decepticons that crashed into the uh, volcano. Crash. Yeah. They crash. We, really like, we don't even know what happened to the original shuttle that the Decepticons jumped off of and it just kept flying Sure, it crashed. crashed. I mean, somewhere. it's like basically oh, having a, the Enterprise in a Star Trek movie. It's probably going to crash in every other movie. Every single shuttle that's been, that we've that's ever true. seen, ever, in this movie. And on the series. Mm. Star that's Trek? That's not true. Because uh, the shuttle with Prime and the Dinobots landed. Okay. And but then, uh, but, Galvatron's. But, but is that one of these shuttles it. here? Yeah. Oh, well, so it ended up because so that ends up crashing eventually. That's true. That's true. Good point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so a shot from outside the captain's cabin. We saw that everybody's been thrown from their seats um, as the the the, sh- the ship kind of that, which is a great animated oh, yeah. shot in between uh, around forty seven. We'll say twenty to twenty eight ish. Yeah, where it slides across all the junk and the junk's in the foreground. Looks and good. It's it really t- a detailed drawing that must yeah. have taken forever. The, pa- the painting, the painting in the background of Junkion is actually also very nice. Oh, I did, I did miss something. Also, actually, it was um, I, uh, I can't remember what minute it is, but when you see Ultra Magnus um, uh, saying "Brace for Impact," the there's a slight error where the uh, painting outside is not moving. Oh. Wow. Outside the window. I'm glad we covered that. Yep. I'm glad we, I brought it to a screeching I, halt to they, say that. They, it's, it wouldn't surprise me if they crashed and then he says that. It says the... Brace for Oh, brace for yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, like this, That's where they pan across all this junk. That's it really looks cool. great. Yeah, it's awesome. It's all... Um, Look you can, at that. You can tell it's like the... It's not like the painted background Mm-mm. animation. It's, it's all the, drawn. It's yeah, it's meant like, to be, you know, moved around. There's rebar and animation. circuits, yeah. Um, so outside, uh, we see everyone's been thrown from their seats at around the 47, 36 minute mark. Um, Ultra Magnus rubs his head. He's recovering. Say something. Anybody. anybody. No. Um, the shot pans across the ship. Everybody, the, I mean, the bodies, they appear lifeless. Mm-hmm. But uh, some, some, some electronic falls. components falls on Springer's head, it looks like. And that kind of wakes him up. And uh, Remind me to give the autopilot a raise. Oh, Springer. Great line. RC recovers. Of course, her first thought is of Daniel because she is I'm a mother. Okay. And God damn it, the kid survived. <laughs> he emerges. 
Uh, Ultra Magnus grabs a sort of, uh, I guess, a repair, it's a welder welding yeah. gun. I think it's a welding and, gun. Uh, and it sparks up. Gonna get. Let's try to salvage this thing. Uh, okay, you got a lot of work ahead of you. And, uh, right here at a uh, forty-seven fifty-seven, basically, is that's the screenshot that you uh, did your famous viral uh, post for D is for endangerment. Oh yeah, I didn't <laughs> realize that. Yeah, D is, and, and that's exactly what's going on. Mm-hmm. Yet another meme that I created that was brilliant. Oh, but, it went. Uh, it was all over the place. You yeah. couldn't log onto the internet without Let's it being see, in your yeah, face. Yeah. Gosh, I mean, we faced a lot of backlash from that, from I, child advocacy people. And, Daniel Gate, <laughs> as it came to be known. I, I I thought that would go crazy. I thought eleven plus six, six. would go crazy. <laughs> Uh, every time we mention it, you do get some pity likes, though. I do. I'm going to keep bringing <laughs> Let's it Let's see up. if we can get two more pity likes apiece for each of those. Please, yes. Somebody go out there and... Viral sensations. <laughs> <laughs> I think it sounds like seven. Uh, so Daniel wants to help as well, to which Springer replies, It's rough out there, kid. His re- and what does that mean? But, I mean, that's not really an answer. It's a weird thing to say. I, guess, I mean, because you could also say, Hey, there's no atmosphere out there, kid. And he or says you could have real- also said, Hey, why did we ever put you on this ship to come along with us? We should have left you on he fucking earth. He says it real malevolent. Like, he does lean in and be like face. a weirdo. <laughs> it's like it's rough out there, kid. <laughs> and Daniel's reaction is amazing. It's really, <laughs> and so I worry. That, his, his, All right, we're going to the next minute. It's true. I, I'll save <laughs> what I had to say about his reaction for That's the next one. The end of this minute. It is. Yeah. That, Daniel's is. worried expression. That's right. Awesome. That's Wide-eyed wonderful. shock. <laughs> He's so precocious. You just want to help, guys. I, I don't. Well, in the he got in, the, in the script deviation, he was patching holes left and right. Yeah, he did stuff. Just put him to work. If it was a modern kid, you'd just leave him on the ship with an iPad. And yeah, one of these indigo mm-hmm. children. Yeah, <laughs> so they call him. Do you know an indigo child is basically a spoiled asshole? Basically, they're the, it's this premise that they're so gifted and so amazing that you should never tell them what to do, That's and they the, should be allowed to do whatever they want, and they don't, you know. They learn. Don't tell them how to learn. It's just basically asshole kids. Oh well, that's they're going to turn out okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's they're definitely not going to become a psychopath. Yeah, and not know how to deal with other they're gonna people. Be well, they're going to be well adjusted. Mm-hmm. That's and this horrible. has been the childless forty-year-old's parenting. That's hour. right, everybody. I'll tell you how to raise your kids. Yeah, thanks. Call me up. <laughs> Remind me. Remind I don't know. I'm, I'm constantly talking out of my ass. That reminds me. You need to stay the hell away from my children. I'm just screaming at them. Like, <laughs> be better. Be better. Spoiled garbage. I children. know how to raise your kids. Indigo child. <laughs> <laughs> we were saying in the car on the way over here, Caleb and I, that if I ever had kids, I have two big fears. One would be that they like are, are really into sports. And the other one is like, I just get a bad seed where nothing I can do. I just clearly have a psychopath that needs to have like, if only super, super late term abortions were legal. Oh, like after they're out of the vagina. That's just murder. You just that's smother abo- them in the crib. Even, that's, yeah, that's not really an abortion. That's just it's kind of that's an abortion. Just, it's abortive. It's abortive. Of their life. Yeah. Some might say abortion is murder. No, political. This has been the political show. <laughs> Good lord. And. How did we get there? Uh, it was a wild ride from Daniel. <laughs> Poor lord. children. Should oh, yeah, yeah. Leave Daniel on the ship with an iPad. That's, That's right. right. That's how there. we got here. Ooh. I just noticed his um, exosuit. Uh, exosuit has heel, high heels. It's true, but we have technically gone into the next minute. Oh, yeah, never mind. Shut up. So, uh, the planet of Junkion. Is not referred to as the planet of Junkion in the movie. It's only referred to as the planet of junk. It's true. It is a, uh, according to TF Wiki, a planet sized garbage dump inhabited by a race of scrap robot yeah. transformers called the Junkions. Their leader is Rekgar. Uh, there isn't much in a strict kind of G1 storyline, aside from the IDW comic continuity uh, that tells the history of this planet. But in I, in the IDW comics, they talk about it as once a living, plentiful world whose natural resources were depleted by arrogant inhabitants. Mm, cautionary tale. And the world uh, gr- ground to a halt. Its gravity began attracting space junk until it was completely covered in trash, Burying the utopian civilization beneath it. Mm. So are the Junkions descendants of that race? I guess. I think so, because they're made of garbage. Or are they Transformers? I actually ha- I talk about that in right. episode 50. We'll, I, will get I guess that. we haven't seen any Junkions. We haven't. True. We, we should, haven't technically we get into that it. conversation. What are Junkions, guys? <laughs> what are they all about? Uh, so on that note, I think <laughs> it's time for some... Script deviations. <laughs> 
if you are new to the podcast, thanks for jumping into episode forty-eight. <laughs> Uh, my script deviations are generally closer to what we saw on screen. And, that would be Aaron. And uh, this is Aaron speaking, and Ryan is his are a little crazier. It's He's an got, earlier draft, got, we think. Got an early draft. <laughs> so um, mine is uh, like uh, it's pretty close in. You know, uh, Ultra Magnus's ship is quote buffeted by winds and storms as it enters the atmosphere of Junkion. So it's kind of like going into Jupiter a little bit. It sounds like. Uh, no, Daniel. Uh, Jupiter's a gas planet. But going into it, would there be winds and storms if you were to try and there penetrate would be its, per- very, its, pretty its atmosphere, Caleb? Okay. You shouldn't enter Jupiter's atmosphere through that. I don't recommend going anywhere into Jupiter. You'll just, it's not a, it's a very hostile environment. Daniel asks Springer where they are, and uh, Springer says, the place where everything ends up after you throw it out. And he holds up his hands and crosses his fingers like a cross for some reason. What? <laughs> what? Religious overtones in this draft. <laughs> Everyone is in a jumbled tangle post wreck. Springer has half his body sticking through the hall, it says. <laughs> That's in mine, too. Uh, Daniel says, Wow, that was better than the roller coaster at Future World. God, it made it to that. That's in mine as well. That made it to a later draft. Do it. Future World. Brilliant uh, name. The, the writers found a moment to enter another sort of perceptor moment with yeah. the. The composition of this planet seems to be a chaotic amalgam of discarded ferrous and non-ferrous articulations. Ultra Magnus, how's that, Springer? He says the planet's made of junk. <laughs> so that <laughs> happens. Uh, Ultra Magnus straps on a tool belt in the this version. <laughs> Straight up Batman <laughs> utility belt. <laughs> And then um, Daniel, the only other piece, Daniel wants to help just like uh, we see on screen. Springer tells him it's rough out there and to stay inside and play with crayons or something. The the, the, the 1986 version of the 2006 equivalent of play with with an iPad. iPad. Does it really say play with crayons? It says that in mine too, yeah. It it literally says that. I hope I didn't steal all No, 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 I've got some other stuff. stuff. All right, that's all I've got. Well, with mine, um, I had to skip because actually, for um, episode fifty, like they don't they don't tr- change back and forth. They stick with Hot Rod and Cup uh, throughout, yeah. the, and they, it does they that in mine as well. do this later. So yeah, I had to mm-hmm. jump f- forward. Yep. Um, so uh, they're all on the edge of a huge shadowy planet in space, uh, like you said, buffeted by winds. Hey, and Springer says, "Hang on, this isn't gonna be any powder puff landing." <laughs> It's fucking great. Uh, it shakes and rattles violently. Daniel hangs on to stru- structural members as RC holds him, and Springer has himself braced across both of them. In background, Ultra Magnus, Blur, and Perceptor are clustered around structural supports near Control Deck, and Ultra Magnus punches in some buttons, and then turns away to face the rest of the group. <laughs> Daniel says, Where are we, Springer? And Springer says, A long way from home, squirt. Ultra Magnus oh. says... <laughs> From here on, it's maybe he wasn't calling uh, Daniel Squirt. Maybe he was like jizzing in his face. Stage directions. That's why it's in in, in parentheses. Robo jizzing. Sorry, Caleb. Your yeah, like in that fast. hilarious Michael Bay moment where uh, John Turturro gets peed on. Right. I fucking hate that. Anyway, uh, Ultra Magnus says, "From here on, it's automatic pilot procedure." Blur. Very fast. Very frightened. The automatic digital extremity crossing, which he crosses his fingers. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, no. Um, and then basically, yep, the ship crashes. Uh, it is the same as yours, Aaron, pretty much from there. Um, and then uh, Springer, pulling himself free of the whole wall, remind me to give the autopilot a raise and a free lube job. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> And um, it, that is hilarious, but also it is interesting because uh, he says, remind me to give the autopilot a raise, which only makes sense because Ultra Magnus said they were on autopilot. In the movie that we see, it doesn't make any sense because the Ultra Magnus was piloting it, and I never no, thought of that. That's true. Yeah, I never did Why either. would you put autopilot on if you're crashing? And there's... It doesn't, it's, it's yeah. Just... Ah! <laughs> Ultra Magnus. Remind me to give you a raise. <laughs> and a lube job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Daniel says this shit about the roller coaster at Future World. Perceptor says the same thing. Ultra Magnus is confused. I'm like, enough of this. Stop this. Uh, Daniel says, looks like there's plenty of stuff to use for repairing our shuttle. Maybe even enough to build a whole other ship. That's ludicrous. <laughs> Ultra Magnus straps on that motherfucking tool belt and says, You're right, Daniel. If we all pitch in, we might be able to get this battered old tub space-worthy before moonset. 
He checks the laser drill, turns it on and off, which you see on sounded screen. like John Wayne. I did. Right it went a little John Wayne. I'm going to do him as John Wayne from now on. <laughs> that is, if this world has a moon. <laughs> Ultra Magnus starts with the door, and Blur takes up an Art Deco electric saw for his tool belt, and Perceptor rolls up shuttle plans, which are paper for some reason, <laughs> and Daniel moves to join them. He says, can I help too? That's where Springer says, it's rough out there, kid. Stay inside and play with crayons or something. Same as in your script, Aaron. And that's right, the end. Wow. All right. Interesting. Going forward, if Ultra Magnus were ever to visit us here in the studio, I would like to think he would have a John Wayne demeanor if, uh, if he ever was to oh, I, show up around here. Hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, I mean, sometimes we have visitors. Yeah, so if he ever, like, you know, pops in in a future episode where right. it's a very special episode or something. Or whatever. So maybe he just comes in to say hi. That, yeah. that he would have a John Wayne accent. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Or uh, demeanor. I, demeanor. That checks out. Yeah, ish. Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> well, we'll see if that happens. <laughs> Uh, so, oh, our house is haunted again, by the way. Oh, shit. Oh, no, look over there. Right, so, okay, we can... We can... I'm the ghost of the iconic moment. <laughs> you know? Uh, what do you guys, what was you, what did you guys like about this? Caleb, so, did you have a moment? You, yeah, well, uh, the, I bet you the, do. The quick scroll shot of after they crashed on Junkion. That was the, great. The hanging down garbage mm -hmm. chunk uh, with the painted background. Nice. Yeah, a lot of work. Yeah, sometimes they get it right on here. It was a lot of detailed work on that. That must have taken. I mean, it must have taken a fair amount to just animate that. It was animated right. detail. Yeah, and they go well. by it really fast. Super fast. Yeah. yeah. So you don't even get to marinate in it. No. It's just like it's gone. Not until you do a show like this. Right. That's right. We appreciate you got animators more than anybody else That's on this right. planet. Wherever <laughs> some episodes were rougher on you, but <laughs> pay no attention to those. Uh, all right, I'll agree. Awesome. <laughs> Rubber stamp that. Next time on the Autobot Decepticast. We've got a lot of Daniel <laughs> dancing. <laughs> the double D. Not in danger anymore, <laughs> baby. That's, right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. That's basically all that Yeah, happens. it's a the lot D, of the minute. The D is for dancing. <laughs> Everybody make that happen. Got a new meme I got to put out right. there. Let's make a gif out of it. Put some music in. Uh, uh, Make it happen. That's oh, uh, it. Out our digital vice president of digital engagement. Yes. We Unfortunately, Did... we can't promote you to president. That's okay. I don't <laughs> care. I was just going to say, like, we're way, we're past the halfway mark. You said, like you said, it was 42.5 okay. was mm -hmm. the halfway mark. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just curious, like... Uh, would have been 85. Yes. Sorry. I have it the text. Start over. Start <laughs> no, over. it's fine. I'm keeping all this in. All the, the angry texts that we... <laughs> our angry text chain from yesterday. Yeah, almost, <laughs> it was yeah. madness. Um, but uh, I'm curious, just for the listeners, like, it, what do you, would you like to see us do after the movie's over? Like, what kind of project would you like to see us do? Would you like to see us review something else uh, Transformers-related? Uh, I mean, I'm we've been bo booting around a bunch of ideas but don't have a specific thought but i don't really want to stop like just completely i would i'd like to i know that your significant others would like us to stop but uh I, and the listeners significant others would like us to stop too they're the ones who they forced them to listen on valentine's day <laughs> mm -hmm. can you imagine a romantic dinner candlelit you got like a nice ooh, you've got a, a nice roast that you worked on all day long a standing prime rib roast and this is playing in the background <laughs> our fucking assholes i wonder if i mean uh at least once, if our podcast has been the background of a sex act, I will say a hundred percent. Like just because I've done it. Because he, Orion, uh, obviously. I had the, I had my, uh, my earbuds in while I'm, I'm, uh, I'm hitting it from the back. I'm <laughs> just listening to myself. <laughs> everybody's shocked. <laughs> I mean, statistically, maybe, maybe it's been going on. So yeah, give us your ideas, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us, do you listen while you fuck? Maybe all you want, really want out of this is uh, Ryan's fuckcast, and Ryan will just come in and talk about all his fuck stories. It's true. Yeah, you. I mean, do you? I could do like a podcast of sex advice, or you know, we oh could. Oh, we God. could do one where it's just life advice. People write in questions, and we just give people advice. <laughs> and or maybe people write in questions, and certain characters we've become Ooh. familiar with can uh, <laughs> yeah if you want if you would like the ghost of the iconic moment to answer your question about tj maxx yeah we, i was thinking uh, we might i was thinking we would after this is all said and done we would release the spirit of 
Casey, Casey Kasem, Kasem via, you know, whatever sort of <sighs> maybe demonic ceremony we would have to do. But maybe if he wants to answer questions. Sure. I mean, maybe we could around. have we could he have a more. Want to. That's up to us. We well, got well, yeah, sure. We'll just tell him to do it. But I'm just saying, <coughs> instead of releasing him as I was planning, maybe we could come to a detente with uh, where we like, uh, I don't know, give him some kind of apology present. And, uh, you know, he'd, he'd voluntarily come on the show. I don't know if that would ever happen. Nah, let's just keep him trapped. All right, everybody, continue to listen to the show on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and tune in. You can follow us on our social media. That's Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all of them at APODDCast. And there's also our web presence at autopoddecepticast.com. If you're an iTunes user, please rate and subscribe. Uh, Ryan, what's going on the website this week, you think? Oh, well, let's see. What do we talk about? Um, we're going to put uh, – I'll put up some pictures of jeweled butt plugs. Yes. Um, what else was there? Bro cells. Bro cells. We'll put up that logo. Mm-hmm. All right. Great. Uh, yeah, Great. Yep, yep. And if uh, anybody ever solves the mystery of where's my money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you know the quote? Because it, it's interesting. The Bears rule uh, was 85? 76. 76. Whoa. Uh, the Bears rule 76. That's the only way he communicates with us, isn't it? Like, oh, he, no. He has, he has actually, he thanked us for his. Did he? Okay. Yeah. It's just so cryptic. I'm surprised. <laughs> I, lo- yeah. I like surprised it too. I like didn't it too. thank us. I would Via rather, a movie line. That's true. I would rather him stay cryptic. I love it. It's great. I love the crypticisms. I just like to be able to figure it out. Well, let's what if he's and literally... And I'd like I, it... I, this is a challenge. This is a challenge. This is good. And yeah. I'd also like it if he would just open up a new iTunes well, account. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, ba- the Bears. Time. The Bears rule 176. The Bears rule 276. Mm-hmm. Uh, Headline the Bears rule, of course, always. Yeah, I mean, always. That way we always know. Uh, just an idea. Um, <laughs> Throwing it out there for the third <laughs> fucking time. Oh, and the final thank you is like to our new sponsor, I guess. Absolutely. Bro-sells. Maybe we can get uh, one more uh, hit at that. Yeah, uh, young Harrison, uh, entrepreneur, uh, maybe starting the next Facebook of or Amazon of sorts. Watch out, Jeff Bezos. A real mysterious okay. store where you can maybe buy or sell things. Brussels, Brussels, where we sell good. Yeah. Not annoying at all. No, that no, never, you don't. never gets old. Definitely, we haven't played it four times and you're <laughs> tired of it. Uh, but uh, yeah, hey, anybody out there want to become a sponsor? We are open for negotiations. I mean, if we're willing to take a sponsorship from a eight-year-old child. Absolutely. Business Nine. Of- Nine-year-old uh, child of, of business of no particular, uh, we have no understanding. A mysterious, of, nope. shadowy business. It it's very much like that. You got money? We got airtime. Yeah, uh, we're, we, you know, we are, don't have a lot of scruples, so it's all cool. All ten of our listeners will certainly mm-hmm. buy your products. It's mm-hmm. a very targeted audience. Oh, uh, it's too bad we didn't think of this before, because we could have had a Valentine's shout-out. Like, you could have paid us to shout-out to your, actually, if you even would have asked, I would have done it just, like, <laughs> to shout-out to your significant other. Hey, get to, f- oh, I could do, like, an after oh, dark God. like oh god mark says hey lisa why don't we do it in the butt tonight <sighs> stop it <laughs> watching you do that creeps me I, out yeah, I i'm glad it, i've never been in the room when you've I done do this is it because like my it. dick's out while i do it is that the weird like part it. this is the one time when uh an after dark actually is appropriate yeah but we're instead we're going to talk about when we lost our virginity no i said that's getting cut i don't want that out there no mine's going <laughs> Oh. Caleb and I will talk about it. Mine's just very brief. That's, <laughs> I guess we, most of mine is just talking about how I'm a buffoon with women. I love it. I love the, I love the whole story. Yeah, we'll you. put that out there. Uh, so yeah, stay, stick around after the, the theme music for some fun romantic talk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fun is in quotes. Scare quotes. Scare quotes. So, I like that better. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye, bye, bye. Bye. Just tell a story of me losing my virginity to pity. That's up to you. Go for it while this is booming. Yeah. Well, so, so Ryan, didn't you lose your virginity to pity? <laughs> Thanks for lobbing that. Start over. Say, Ryan, didn't you lose your virginity? And I'll say, to pity. Yeah. Wow, the whole bit. Um, I think it was twenty. The Five. year was. The year was two thousand and ten. That would have been nineteen ninety eight. Yeah, that's right. So you were 20.
And it I was. I thought you were eighteen, but whatever. Nope. I thought you lost your virginity earlier than that. It was nope. <laughs> I remember. Uh, it was. Right around Christmas, actually, uh, after, right after the employee Christmas party at Twin Oaks, and I was very, I was interested in this chick Tanya that worked there as well. Yeah, she was about like six years older than me, and honestly, I mean, we'd flirted and stuff like that. And her sister was really cute too, mm-hmm. uh, Dechelle. Uh, yeah, which I who I run into occasionally in a weird way every couple of years. Um, Wait, where can you find Dechelle? Oh, I, I get it. Joke, I didn't. Caleb. I didn't pick up. I didn't pick up on the joke until just now. Wow. That was okay. That was fair enough. Good pun. Good wordplay. You're welcome. Um, and so we'd been flirting for a while, and I think honestly, she did. She knew I was a virgin. I think mainly the reason we hooked up is that she wanted to just have sex with a virgin. Um, really. Which is like, why would you ever? I don't know, especially as a woman, but I think it was like more of like the uh, allure of uh, deflowering. Interesting. We had sex, like we had sex, and I did not come the first time because I don't. This is oh. with the exception of like a couple times. I usually don't. The first time I have sex with someone, I almost never finish. Well, I don't need to know all this. But, well, you uh, should, and the listener certainly doesn't. No, they. I want to paint a word picture. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, so where were you guys? Uh, you at an, your place or at the at the at the country club? That would have been awesome. No, it was at my hat place. It was whenever I was living with um, Dan and Mike. This wasn't at your trailer house. No, this was like mm, this was in Springfield. The trailer house. That's a whole another. I was your roommate at the time. Were you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Ah. Yeah, I just remember I had I did have the house to myself. That's right. And um, uh, we th- we did it that night. and We did it the next day, and then never again. <laughs> And she was just kind of like, I'm done. It was like two ships passing in the night. And uh, I do remember what... Uh, she was like, maybe fucking a virgin wasn't that great an idea. Here, hey, hey, <laughs> guess what? Well, that, I did, she... Because now you've got somebody who doesn't know how to fuck that's really clingy to you. <laughs> but, that's true, I was very clingy and weird. Yeah. Um, but I, my uh, my oral sex game was on point, because she actually, I didn't, she didn't come from the penis, but she came from that, and that's always been my highest card. I don't need <laughs> Going down. All of this. Going downtown. Ryan cannot wait to put this on his so like quick tag. Was this, for, a, <laughs> was this a, it's just a sad was this a gross good, story? Was this a good story? No, it was. I mean, well, I'm it, trying it, to figure out why we would. Tell well, the this quality story. of this story was not good. No, it was. I need. I need to do a like a, a, a <laughs> work it out in nothing, like a workshop. A few moths at the moth. Yeah. <laughs> to, me, yeah. to me, it seems like nothing really interesting happened in this. Story. I guess I was just. It's just funny to me thinking about. Like, the fact that I was very, like, just kind of begging for it to have... Like, she would sleep there before that leading up to this. And I'm like, why are we sleeping in a bed together? Mm. And then, uh, but one of my favorite things I've ever said was one time after that, like, one of the last times she slept there after we had sex, she was, like, just wanted to go to sleep and was like, if I kiss you, will you go to sleep? And I said, where are you going to kiss me? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so sad. Well, this didn't work out as I planned. <laughs> <laughs> the story or that moment? No, but, uh, or all of it? Up to and including my life. <laughs> Oh, I have a sadder story about that girl. No. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, well, to, to curry favor with her, like, to get her back in my good graces, like, because she was just not into it. Um, her birthday was, like, I think in January or February, and I went, and you know that, uh, the bed and breakfast at Elfendale? This is going to be pathetic. It is. Um, I decided to get a room there, and, um, <laughs> yeah, it goes about as well as you might imagine okay. this plan. <laughs> So I got a room at the place, and um, it was like, God, why do bed and breakfasts exist? What a horrible invention of just you're sleeping in someone's house, and and then you have to eat with them. I'm okay with that. Ugh. No TV in the room, which actually I did. Okay, so I got this room. I set it all up. I got, like, some champagne and, and some flowers and stuff, and I even brought, like, a TV in with a VCR with it. No, um, that's kind of creepy. No, nope. That was more for you. It was definitely for me. <laughs> so you could watch that's movies cre- after you that's hang. That's creepy. I'm <laughs> like, I, why is it creepy? Well, I, you know, let's... Okay. Let's just continue with the story. All right. So I got it all set up, and then I'm like, ah, oh, she's going to love this. It's going to be exciting. And then I went over to her house, and um, she... Uh, wait, wait, wait. You got all of this together first. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then you went over Mm-hmm. I didn't tell her, her about it. Okay. It was a birthday present yeah. for Surprise. me, apparently. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Because <laughs> that's what she calls me out on. But, like, uh-huh. I go there... I'm like, hey, I got something to show you. Come with me. I got, and 
<laughs> Which now I've that I'm telling this, it, I've got this room with a television and a VCR in it. Insane. Okay. <laughs> and I t- I'm like, come on, uh, I got this thing to show you. And she's like, no, I don't really want to go anywhere. And it it is like eight o'clock at night, and she's not. E- she's like wearing sweats and stuff. Okay. And um, I'm like, I try a couple of times to get her to come with me, and then eventually I'm just like, well. I pull the key out of my my pocket. And I'm like, well, like they had actual keys. I got this room at this bed and breakfast, uh-huh. and she's like, oh, what did you think was gonna happen? We're gonna go over there and have sex. And I'm like, well, yep. yeah, but it's nice and it's a place. Well, we can watch television, afterwards. That's right? <laughs> I got this. Did you mention the TV and VCR? <laughs> that may have been my mistake, because I didn't mention oh, that, that I had. Oh, you think that was what <laughs> did it? That was probably. T- oh, yeah. <laughs> Why she that did was, it? She'd have been like, oh, oh, okay. See, that's you. Ooh, a VCR that's a, TV. That's in your mind. <laughs> yeah. There's a television over there. I put it oh. in there myself. And then See, I came. This story is much better. I like this story a lot. Better. <laughs> then I came home, and I think you were, there was a bunch of people at the house. And I walk in, and you must have known that I was doing this. I knew you were doing it. I, I, you, I remember you were setting it up all day. I think <laughs> I think I understood that maybe she knew about it or something, well. <laughs> and and I didn't realize that that you were operating under a very very deep delusion. <laughs> <laughs> So did you go spend the night in the room? No. I went back there and gathered all my stuff, left the money on the desk with my key, went home, and as I'm dragging the stuff into the house, people look at me, and I'm like, not a word, not a syllable. I don't want to talk about it. And I just got hammered. And then we got drunk. I yep. remember that. I remember spending some time on the phone with Tanya that night. Being oh, like, no. What? I don't, yeah, I, 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 I called her up. I was like, what's the deal? Because I still, again, was operating under the idea that she knew about it. And then just decided not to go. And I was also just a young, dumb idiot being like, why don't you just you hook up with Ryan? Like, he's a nice guy. I thought the story was going to be, you actually, you and went Tom, over you there. went over the room and banged. Hey, free room over hey, here. free room. Oh, <laughs> There's not a TV in there to mess up our vibe. <laughs> I mean, I didn't do this, but it might as well have had like a trail of rose petals up onto the bed. And... He was making a grand, young, dumb gesture. Oh, in the retrospect, that's a ter- that was a terrible idea. It's kind of creepy. Creepy. It is very creepy. Well, yeah. I think yeah, I, I think you just uh, like really I thought, thought that sweet. you were going to be able to like make her love you. Well, yes, is what it yes. was. was, and it was never going to happen. She wasn't the type into, of person yeah. that was ever going to fall in love with you or maybe anybody. Who knows? And I was like, yeah. I've always been like, always just wanted to be in love since I was a child. That's all I ever wanted, yeah. and so I really painted it in my mind of like this like grand romantic gesture when it's just fucking in, in retrospect creepy as hell, <laughs> weird. Yeah. yeah, I I mean. When I, I wasn't. I'm around the same age. I was the same kind of delusional. I, I, yeah. It's weird how you know, I've done dumb things a young, myself. You know, a young man's mind. You, you've convinced yourself that it's mm-hmm. the, and you've obsessed your brain to the point where this is actually a good idea. <laughs> right? Then welcome. To a special uh, relationship edition of the Autopod Deceptive. Save this. We should have saved this for our Valentine's Day show. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> I, true. I lost my virginity on acid. <laughs> <laughs> I was on LSD. Well, we, hey, we can bank we'll this We'll tease stuff. that. that uh, there's, that's that about as interesting as it gets. Uh, Did you not, come? No. <laughs> I was a little preoccupied with the acid in my brain. <laughs> what? What a great... Like, I, you, presumably you didn't know you were going to get laid that night. No. I knew I was going to do You weren't like, let's make it a real event. Yeah. And no. I want to be tripping balls. No, no, I didn't make an event out of it other than that I was... Uh, head was full of... Hallu- I was hallucinating. That was about it. Did that you was... see any weird visuals during the sex? Uh, no. No. Mm. No. It was kind of on the, on the downslope of uh, the experience. So I was kind of coming down from acid. And so everything was just kind of... Weird. Weird and just... Uh, just uh, One my, time I my did... My serotonin was gone. Yeah. And so it nothing was good. <laughs> <laughs> the one time I did mushrooms, I masturbated after everybody left, and it took a while. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> your, your brain is preoccupied with other things, such as the uh, the walls bubbling and stuff like that. But did you do that just to be? Were you really like, I just want to know how it feels? No, nah, I was just. Mushrooms. It was like Ryan because it was he a day that existed. <laughs> so jerk, I'm yeah. like, Ryan jerks off at any chance, at any, at any, any reason. Yeah, I mean.